What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing your song. I will try not to sing out of key. Oh. a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Even the state of Mississippi... 1968 was a strange and passionate time. Things that it seemed impossible were happening all around us. Freedom and justice. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. The events of those days brought every emotion to the surface. We will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. We felt things strongly then, and we felt them together. I guess we all got caught up in it, even me and Miss White. and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Well, people, we certainly lost a great man last April, didn't we? What was it about her that affected me so profoundly? Her sensitivity? Her warmth? Her intelligence? What do you think, Leslie? Maybe all of those. I think... Maybe more. Maybe much more. Kevin. Uh, yes? Do you agree with Leslie that this speech helped change people's feelings about civil rights? Yes, uh huh? Yep, yeah, I do. How? Do you think it might have changed people's opinions? Anyone? Kevin? I think that it showed a lot of people that America couldn't be as great a country as they wanted until everybody had equal rights. Ah, the look. I'll never forget that look. The way she cocked her cute little head to the side as her eyes met mine. Very good, Kevin. What other effect do you think that this speech had on people? Kevin? Um, I, I think that maybe before the speech, people thought of Negroes as a group that maybe they didn't like. But the speech made them realize that the Negroes are just people and they have the same feelings that all other people do. Another look. Oh, it was too good to be true. I was tempted to try for a third, but I didn't want her to pull a muscle in her neck or anything. People! I haven't dismissed you, have I? Now, today is the last day to sign up for the fall play, and there are still several key roles open. Now, as you know, the play is about the civil rights movement, and I hope that today's film will inspire some of you to participate, okay? Dismissed. Can I speak with you a minute? Sure. I was wondering if you thought about trying out for the play. Oh, the play. I loved Miss White, but I hated plays. 
It's really an exciting new play. It's never been performed before. In fact, well, the truth is that it, it's actually, well, I wrote it. God, she was cute, but I hated plays. You'd be perfect for the part of Robert Kennedy. I really think that, that you have the right presence. Well, I guess I did have kind of a Kennedy-esque thing about me, but I hated plays. So, what do you think? Um. I hated the thought of acting. I hated the thought of rehearsing. I hated the thought of standing up in front of an audience of 300 people and making a complete and total fool of myself. Sure. Great. Three looks. The hat trick. It wasn't just my imagination. She felt it. She knew it. She wanted me to. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. But you hated plays. Why do you want to be in a play all of a sudden? I don't know. No reason. Kevin, what play is it? It's called The Times. They are changing. It's about the civil rights movement and stuff like that. The hell ever happened to my fair lady? Dad, theater is supposed to be a form of political expression. Not when you're 12. Don't you understand? I mean, a play like this can raise people's consciousness about racial oppression. Sheesh. Watch your tone with your father. Yeah, and give me that potato if you're not going to eat it. Kevin, I think it sounds wonderful. Um, we have to rehearse until 5.30 every day. Um, can you pick me up? Oh, gee, I don't know. I'm right in the middle of fixing dinner at 5.30. Jack, you think maybe you could swing by school and pick him up on your way home? I don't get it. Why do you want to be in a play? What was the matter with the man? Couldn't he see that I was pursuing a mature love relationship with a beautiful 28-year-old woman, and all I needed was a ride? Dad. Okay, okay. Pick you up. I mean, I... The most important thing about this scene is that it conveyed tension. Now, Kevin, remember that Kennedy was a very passionate, forceful man. Try to feel that passion. Okay. Okay, let's try it again. I'm Attorney General Robert Kennedy, and I'm here to see Mr. Hoover of the FBI. Go right in, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Hoover, I need a... a more support from you. The Negroes are fighting for their rights, and we must help them. Are you trying to tell me how to run my agency? All I am uh, saying is that we should give all the support we can to Dr. King. Well, that man is a threat to the American way of life. Yeah. yeah. No, he is not. He's fighting for the cause of freedom. Very good, very good. Kevin, that was wonderful. Good anger. Thanks. Much better, Paul, and everyone else, good work. Now, tomorrow we'll rehearse the town meeting scene, so start learning your lines. Do you think I came off as unlikable? Paul. You're playing J. Edgar Hoover. You're supposed to be unlikable. I know, but Mr. White said I should try to find the complexity in the man. That man is a threat to the American way of life. That man is a threat to the American way of life. That man is a threat to the American way of life. Miss White? Yes, Kevin? I just wanted to say that I think a play like this can really raise people's consciousness about racial oppression. Do you really? Because that was my hope when I wrote it. Yeah. I've, I've always felt that theater was supposed to be a form of political expression. Well, that's remarkable. Because so few 12-year-olds do. Yeah, I know. Most 12-year-olds are so superficial. Yeah, I guess they are. Well, it was pretty clear. She didn't see me as any ordinary seventh grader. She saw me as a man. A man who understood things like democracy and social injustice. A man who understood her deepest thoughts and feelings. A man. A man. Kevin, you ready to go? A man who was getting picked up by his father. Oh, Kevin, is that your father? Yeah. 
Jack Arnold. It's nice to meet you. Hi, Diane White. It's a pleasure. Diane White? Didn't seem to fit. To me, she was more of a... Miss White. Now, I must tell you, Mr. Arnold, that Kevin is an extraordinary young man. It's a pleasure to have him in my class. And, of course, in the play. Yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah. Let's face it. I was well-liked. Now, now, let's go. He's really a natural actor. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's funny, because I always thought he hated acting. Let's go. Let's go. Really? Yeah. You see, in uh, fourth grade... Uh, Kevin, you remember that? <laughs> In fourth grade, he had to play Winnie the Pooh in his class play. <laughs> and right in the middle of his big scene with Piglet, in front of the whole school, all the parents, <laughs> his little bear suit splits wide open. So, Jack, ready to go? I mean, Dad. Mr. Dad. Sir. Toward the end of rehearsal the next day, I realized something was bugging me. I see a more compassionate America, a nation in which all people, black, white, and brown, have the opportunity to build a better life for their children. Miss White hadn't given me the look all day. What was I doing wrong? An America where all people can live free of violence and oppression. An America where dreams can come true. Miss White, was that... A Oh, okay. Very nice, everybody. That's it for today. Oh, great. Now he was probably telling her about the time at Ocean City when that wave knocked my bathing suit off. Or the time at Funland when I threw up on the cup and saucer ride. Or that time at the... Yep, two years in Korea. Wait a second. I never spent two years in Korea. Got a small piece of shrapnel on my leg, but I didn't think the limp was noticeable anymore. Oh, him. Oh, barely. Hardly at all. Just... A little bit, really. A question to consider. Why, at that moment, did I wish that I had shrapnel in my leg? Listen, I consider myself lucky. A lot of my buddies never made it out of that place. War is such a terrible thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss White? Was I okay today? Yes, Kevin, you were fine. Does the experience haunt you at all? Well, well sure. Sure, I think about it now and again. It's only natural. I guess nothing's ever quite the same after going through something like that. Wait a minute. What was she doing? That was my look. She was looking at him. Dan, let's go! Now, most people don't know this, but there are two kinds of logic. There's logic logic, and then there's 12-year-old in love logic. Whiff! High and inside. The way I figured it, everything had been going great with Miss White. Until Dad came along. Ball two. What? Too high. That was not. I hated him for it. Ow. What are you trying to do? Break my hand? That was a strike. And so is the last one. What's the matter with you? Nothing! The, um... The Negroes are fighting for the rights and we must help them. Are you trying to tell me how to run my agency? I said, are you trying to tell me how to run my agency? Or are you saying that we should just try to help Dr. King as much as we can? Because if you are, I disagree. Okay, let's stop for a moment. Kevin, do you need to go over your lines? No. Is something wrong? Is something wrong? Is something wrong? Our entire relationship is fizzling like an Alka-Seltzer and you ask if something's wrong? Can I make a phone call? Well, sure. Of course. Take five, everybody. Five what? Is Jack Arnold there? It's Kevin Arnold. Hi, Dad. It's me. I'm not going to need right home today. Yeah, I got one. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll see you at home. Bye. See you. Kevin, isn't your father picking you up? 
How are you getting home? I'll walk, I guess. Can I give you a lift? Here we are. I wanted something to happen. I didn't know what. I just knew that I couldn't leave that car until something happened. When do you have to be home? Thanksgiving. Kevin? Are you all right? Yeah, fine. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Well, you better get a good night's sleep because tomorrow's the big day. Yeah. Guess we won't be seeing each other that much anymore. At least not professionally. Oh, no, I guess we won't. There's still English class, though. You can't get out of that so easily. Yeah. I had to make a move, some kind of move. My moment was slipping away. Miss White? Mm-hmm. You're pretty. Thank you, Kevin. Is there something you want to talk about? No, I didn't want to talk. I wanted to take her in my arms and kiss her on the lips. I wanted it so bad I thought I would explode. She was right there. She was two feet away. Why couldn't I do it? Why wouldn't my muscles move? After all, she was a woman and I was a... And that's when I saw it. As though I was looking down from heaven at that VW bug. I saw an image of myself with Miss White. And it was ridiculous. She was a woman, and I was a 12-year-old boy. Kevin, is that you? Honey, dinner's almost ready. Oh, I gotta go. Bye, Miss White. Thanks for the ride. Bye, Kevin. and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream today that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. I Waiting backstage today, that night, I, I started that thinking of that first day I fell in love with Miss White back in the classroom. I thought of the way she had cried at Dr. King's speech, skin, and I thought of the way that made me character. feel. This is our hope. This is the faith with which I return to the South. And you know with something? Faith, we'll In my heart, I really believe that Miss White loved me too. To it wasn't something that could be a part of real life, but that didn't mean it wasn't there. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where and that's when I knew what was going to happen. Land of the pilgrim's pride. That's when I knew what Every I was going to do. Hey, Kevin, America, you ready? You're almost done. Great nation. This must be true. I was so going 
from the prodigious to crop. tops of New Hampshire. Hey, hey, Kevin, what's the matter? The ring from the mighty mountains of New I was York. about to go out to deliver a speech in front of 300 people, and I was going to cry. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Okay, Kevin, this is you. You're on. Come on, Kev. a more compassionate America, a nation in which all people, black, white, and brown, have the opportunity to build a better life for their children, a nation in which all people can live free of oppression and violence. Our answer is the world's hope. It is to rely on youth. I don't even remember how I got through that speech. I just remember all the hurt, all the anger, all the disappointment, and all the love that fused together and surged through my 12-year-old body as I delivered it. Some men see things as they are and ask why. I see things as they might be and ask why not. <laughs>